Lesson 1.2, read and write numbers in standard form, word form, and expanded form. We can read and write numbers through hundred thousands in standard form, word form, and expanded form. In standard form, we have this one, two, three, comma, zero, zero, zero. That's 123,000. We don't have anything over here, so we just say 123,000. In word form, we would write 123,000. Notice 23 has a hyphen. In expanded form, we would add each place value. We have 100,000 plus 20,000 plus 3,000. As we learned in video 1.1, each group of three place values is called a period. So we have a period for the ones, we have a period for the thousands, and a period for the millions. And each period contains hundreds, tens, ones. See? Hundreds, tens, ones. Hundreds, tens, ones. When we write a number in standard form or word form, we put a comma between each period. So between each of these periods, there would be a comma. In standard form, we have a 1, 2, 3, comma, 4, 5, 6. See? In word form, we have 123,456. So notice between the 23, we have a hyphen, and between the 50 and 6, we have a hyphen. Now some countries don't use a comma, but we do in the USA. We can use a place value chart to find which digit in a number has the greatest value. So in this number, the 1 has the greatest value because it's farthest to the left. Read and write these numbers using place value. So we don't know what the standard form is right now because we don't know what the number is. But look, it says in word form it's 65,470. So we can turn the word form into standard form. We see in the word form we have 65,000 and a comma. So we can write 65 comma. Then we can write 470. That's the number in standard form. And we can write it in expanded form by adding each place value. We have 60,000 plus 5,000 plus, that's 400, isn't it? This would be 7 tens, so we would have a 70 there. And we don't have any ones, so we don't need this. Now we've written it in expanded form. Here we have the number written in standard form, and we need to put it into word form. So we need to remember our periods. This is the thousands period, isn't it? And we have 236,000. So we write 236,000, and we have a comma here. So remember, when we write a number in standard form or word form, we put a comma between each period. So we need a comma here. Now we don't have any hundreds, so we just write 48. We have 236,048. Now we need to write it in expanded form, and we can just look at the place value and see we have 200,000. We have three ten thousands, that's 30,000. We have a 6 in the 1,000s place, so we have 6,000. And it already gave us the 40 plus 8. So we have 200,000 plus 30,000 plus 6,000 plus 40 plus 8 for the expanded form of that number. We can use place value and periods. the period names to read and write large numbers. So here we've got this large number. We can put it into our place value chart. 
and we put the 4, 2, and 1 into the thousands period, and the 5, 6, and 3 into the ones period. And this will help us read and write the number 421,563. In the year 2018, 577,617 people saw Katy Perry in concert. Write the number of people in standard form. So here we have it written in word form. We need to put it into standard form with numbers and commas. We see 577,000 comma. And that's what we write. Then we see 617. So that's what we're going to put here. Now we've turned this word form into standard form. And it's telling us to write this number in expanded form. So we need to look at each place value. So right here we have 500,000. And if you're still confused, you can use your place value chart. It would be right here, 500,000. The next place value is this 7, that's in the 10,000s place, so we have 70,000. We look here in the 1,000s place value and we have a 7, so that's 7,000. We move to this place value, we have a 6 in the 100s place, that's 600. We have a 1 in the 10s place, so that's just a 10. And we have a 7 in the 1s place. We've written it in expanded form. Tala wrote 19,317 and 43,119 on a paper. So which number has a greater value in the thousands place? So that means the one thousands place. We can write both numbers into a place value chart to compare the digits in the thousands place. We have a 9 and we have a 3. And we can see the 9 is greater than the 3. So 19,317 has a greater value in the thousands place. So it didn't say thousands period, because that would be this whole thing. It said thousands place, so they mean one thousands place. We write the name of each period greater than the ones period when writing in word form. We write 19,000, that's the name of the period, 317. And the last period is always the ones period, so we don't need to read or write the word ones. When we're in the thousands period, we write the word thousands. Look at this one, we have two million, we wrote the name of the period, millions, 119,000, we wrote the period name thousand, 306. So we don't need to say 306 ones. The last period is always the ones period, so we don't need to read or write the word ones. If we total all the add-ends of a number written in expanded form, it would equal the number written in standard form. We have 700,000, we have 20,000, we have 8,000, we have 500, we have 30, and we have 9. And starting in the 1's place, we have all these zeros plus 9, that's a 9. Then in the 10's place, we have all these zeros plus 3, that's a 3. In the 100's place, we have all these zeros and a 5, so that's 5. And in the 1000's place, we have 8 plus 0 plus 0, that's 8. In the 10,000's place, we have 2 plus 0, that's 2. And in the 100,000's place, we have the 7. So when we total all the add-ins of a number written in expanded form, it equals the number written in standard form. Remember that expanded form uses plus signs. You can remember expanded starts with an E. It starts with the letter E, like the word equation. So when you write something in expanded form, it looks like an equation. Here we have a table of information we can read the title, it says Major Cities in North Dakota. Here we have our cities, Fargo, Bismarck, and Grand Forks. And here we have the populations, 
for each of those cities. That's the population for Fargo, that's the one for Bismarck, that's the one for Grand Forks, and we can see a little asterisk up here. It's telling us that this information is from the U.S. Census Bureau 2010. And we can use a place value chart to help us answer these questions. It says, which city has the greatest value in the 10,000s place? So if you already know your place values, you'll be able to answer that very quickly. And you could also put these numbers into a place value chart to find the 10,000s place. It's right here. Here's the 1,000s. Here's the 10,000s. We know there would be a comma right here, wouldn't there? So we see the comma. That's the 1,000s. That's the 10,000s. That's got zero. We have our comma. That's the 1,000s. There's the 10,000s. It's a six. And then here we have our comma, and we can see the ones and then the tens. That's a five. So which city has the greatest value in the ten thousands place? That's this place right here. We can see that it's Bismarck. Now it's telling us to write the population of Fargo in word form. So we need to write this population in word form. And remember, in standard form or word form, we put a comma between each period. We write 105,000 for this part of the population. Now we need to write 549. And notice again, there's a hyphen between the word 40 and 9. We're going to use some common sense and deductive reasoning in this problem. So a beanbag game board has three holes. And the large hole is worth 1,000 points. The medium hole is worth 10,000 points. And the small hole is worth 100,000 points. Let's take a closer look. So this is the board for the beanbag game. The little hole has 100,000 points. The medium has 10,000. And the large one has 1,000 points, because I guess it's less points than these, because it's bigger and easier to throw the beanbag into. Emma tossed four beanbags. Two beanbags landed in one hole, and two landed in another hole. Her score is greater than 100,000. What could her score be? So we think. Her score is greater than 100,000. That's what the problem said. And also told us two beanbags landed in the same hole and two landed in another hole. We need to find her possible scores. So there's three holes here. It says two beanbags landed in the same hole and two landed in another hole. So that means one hole didn't even have beanbags thrown into it. We're only working with two of the holes. It also said her score is greater than 100,000, so that had to be one of the holes because you couldn't throw them into these two and ignore this one and have over 100,000. So two beanbags had to have gone into the 100,000 point hole. But two beanbags landed in another one. So did it land in the middle one, the medium sized one, or the larger one? Well, we don't know. So she could have 100,000 plus 100,000 and 10,000 plus 10,000. That's equal to 220,000. Or she could have had them land in 100,000 and 100,000 and 1,000 and 1,000. Because it said the, uh, the last two landed in another hole. That, you know, So there was two in this one and two that landed in the same hole, either that one or that one. So. It could be 202,000. So Emma's score is either 220,000 or 202,000. The greatest possible score she could have gotten is 220,000, and the least possible score is 202,000. We can make a list, draw a diagram, or write equations to solve this problem. Little pictures, something that'll help you solve the problem. You could even draw this on scratch paper and put an X over one and figure out what two beanbags here and two beanbags here would equal. Then put an X over this one and figure out what these two beanbags plus these two beanbags would equal. Whatever will help you solve the problem. 
So remember the pattern in the place value chart. Each period, the ones, thousands, and millions, has hundreds, tens, ones. See that? Hundreds, tens, ones. You might see them as an HTO for hundreds, tens, ones. So we go from the ones period to the thousands period to the millions period, and it actually keeps on going very, very far to the left. But we're just dealing with these periods for right now. So remember that pattern. Each period has a hundreds, a tens, and a ones. In our next lesson, 1.3, we're going to compare and order numbers, and we're going to talk about less than, greater than, and equal to, and use those symbols between numbers. I hope you're doing very well. Keep trying hard. I'm proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.